Okay, so let's see how well you understand basic algebra. So the problem here is a, a two-variable linear system. And uh, we have two equations here and two variables, x and y. So we have 5x plus 2y is equal to 4. That's one equation. And the second equation is 2x plus 5y is equal to 10. And this is a multiple choice question. And what we're trying to do here is solve for x and y. So our choices is a, negative 1, 4, b, 0, 2, and c, 3, 5. Now, if you don't understand the answers in terms of this question right here, we're trying to solve for x and y, and you're like, hey, Mr. Do 2 math man, what does this mean? Well, I will explain all this in just one second, but hopefully you understand what's going on. Matter of fact, if you have the right answer, put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we're going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have a two-variable linear system. That's a pretty fancy description on what's going on here, but uh, what we're doing or this uh, level of math, is uh, something that uh, even students in like a pre-algebra course should be able to solve, all right? So again, we're talking about basic algebra here, but let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is B, 0, 2. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being able to solve a two-variable a linear equation that is fantastic and uh, there's a couple different ways you could have solved this uh, problem right and all of them are um, you know good ways I'm going to talk about a few different methods here in just one second but let's go ahead and take a look at this problem in this uh, respect right so we have a multiple choice question and you might be saying hey Mr. YouTube math man I don't even know what to do here should I take a guess the answer is yes but you don't even have to guess because if you understand what these answers mean in terms of the problem, you can easily figure out the right answer. Okay, so let me explain this here because this would be a nice introduction to systems. So uh, again, we're, our, uh, we're talking about a two variable, okay, because there's two variables, X and Y, linear. All right, now let me write this word out here. Uh, I and linear, right, linear system. Now, the root word of this word linear is line, okay? Basically, what we have is two lines. In other words, this is a line, and this is like another line, all right? Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about? Well, let's think about this as like line one, and this is like line two. And these are the equations, uh, linear equations for these respective lines. And let's talk about systems real quick, and then we'll go back to our uh, multiple choice question. All right, so uh, we have two lines. A linear system is literally two lines on X, Y plane. So let's suppose one line uh, went like this. Now, I don't know how these uh, lines actually go. I'm just making a point. And our other line, when we graphed it, uh, went like this. Now, we have equations to these lines. You can write an equation like Y equals MX plus B or an equation in standard form. That's not important right now. What is important is the concept of the solution to a system. Now, when you have a two-variable linear system, you can kind of graphically think of it as uh, two lines crossing. Okay, now hopefully they cross because a point of intersection is the solution, and that is a specific x-y ordered pair. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a point that's on this green line and also on the yellow line. So that's the point where these two lines cross. So if you have a system and it actually has a solution, that means these lines uh, cross. So again, the solution to a system is an XY ordered pair. Now that's important. Uh, you'll see here in a second when we talk about uh, solutions. But uh, well, you know, if we have two lines, there's no guarantee that these lines are going to cross. Matter of fact, you could have a situation. Let me see if I could sketch it out a bit uh, better. Something like this. All right. So you have uh, one line here 
and now you have a another line right here. These lines are parallel, okay? So they're uh, not going to cross. So a system where you have two uh, linear equations that are parallel to one another has no solutions. And then you can have another uh, situation where one line is like literally on top of the other line and you have infinite, infinitely many solutions. So the topic of systems is a big topic, but from a real basic kind of graphical sense, what we're looking for is uh, if these two lines intersect. Now here, now that we understand that these uh, points represent X, Y order pairs, we can actually literally plug in these values for X and Y and see which one works. So we know that B is the correct answer. So that means that, now let's go ahead and actually do it like this. So zero, two. So this is the X, Y ordered pair. This is the location where these two lines graphically would cross. All right, now let's uh, go ahead and check this. So if we're saying that uh, these lines cross uh, at zero, two, so X is zero and Y is two, you could just literally plug in 0, 2 into these equation, uh, into these equations and check. So 5 times, okay, x is 0, right? So that's going to be 0, plus 2 times y, y is what? 2, all right? So is this equal to 4? So 5 times 0 is 0, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4 is equal to 4. That is a true statement, but we also have to check it on the other equations. So x is what? 0, 2 times 2 is 0, plus 5 times y, again, is 2. So 5 times 2, is that equal to 10? Yes, 5 times 2 is 10, is equal to 10. Uh, so uh, this pair, this order pair, 0, 2, uh, satisfies both of these equations. So you can just literally test um, these answers and get the right answer. This is a, a great strategy. And remember, if you're taking a math exam, if you still have to take math exams, and you have uh, an equation, okay, whether it's a system of equation or any other type of equation, and it's multiple choice, you can always plug in your answers to see which of these solutions actually satisfies the equation. All right, so, so hopefully, you know, no one just took a, a blind glass, blind guess, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, you know, again, you got to always think. So I like to give these uh, little tips here because nothing makes a math teacher crazier than seeing someone leave a question blank or not being able to reason through, even if you don't know how to solve the equation. All right, but what happens if this is not a multiple choice question? Well, well now we're just going to have to know the math. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so we did a quick uh, basic uh, review of what um, a two variable uh, linear system is, you know, from a graphical standpoint. Now let's talk about how to actually solve a two variable linear system. So there's basically three options. There's actually other techniques that you learn in more advanced algebra courses. You can use matrices and all kinds of fancy stuff. But typically, uh, in basic algebra, you're going to use one of these three methods, and really you're going to use just two of these methods. Now, what we could do is um, to find the point of intersection for these two linear equations is you could be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to get some uh, graph paper and I'm going to nice and neatly graph each line and just look to see where these lines cross. Well, you can do that. And that's called the graphing method. And uh, you do learn that method, but it's really not a practical method, but it is a method, so you should know it. So that's the graphing method. Again, not too practical, but what you really need to understand is these two methods right here. We need algebraic methods to solve a linear system, and there's two. Okay, the first is the substitution method, and the second is the elimination or a linear combination method. All right, they're uh, just uh, two different names, same method, elimination method or a linear combination method. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what method to use here. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a full how to solve systems, um, you know, kind of lesson because this is a lot of stuff that you uh, learn like in a full chapter in a math class. So I'm not going to use the substitution method, but you need to understand that. Now, I'm going to give you some recommendations on how you can learn more about systems. But if you walk away just understanding one method and not the other, you need to, you know, make sure you do some follow through. OK, so you need to absolutely be experts in both of these methods. Now, what I'm going to do here is use the elimination linear combination method. Now, typically, if our setup was something like y was equal to 2x plus 1, 
and then we had like maybe like 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. This would be a great candidate for the substitution method. And what we're trying to do, whether it's the substitution method or a linear combination method, is we have an equation uh, with two variables. We're like, how do we solve an equation with two variables? You might be saying to yourself, hey, Mr. D2 Math Man, I could solve an equation with one variable, something like this, 2x plus 8 is equal to 10. But if you give me two variables in the equation, I'm totally lost. I, uh, you know, I get that, right? So what we're going to do is use the elimination uh, linear combination method or substitution method to construct an equation with just one variable. We don't really care if it's x or y. We just need one equation in one variable. We're going to solve for that variable. And then uh, once we have that variable solved for, we can easily get the other variable. But the substitution method, the substitution method, real quick, in this particular case, if y is equal to 2x plus 1, we could put parentheses around that, and we can uh, substitute this y right here with 2x plus 1, and now we have an equation after I substitute this y with 2x plus 1 in all x. We have 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 7, so we have one equation in one variable, then we could solve that equation and then get y. All right, that's just a little fast uh, intro to the substitution method. But the elimination method is a pretty cool method. And uh, what we're going to do here at uh, the elimination linear combination method, linear combination, I like to kind of think of it as a peanut butter and jelly kind of strategy, which means that here you have your pieces of bread with peanut butter and jelly. We're going to combine the, the two. We're going to smash them together. And what we're going to do is combine these things together. Okay, you can, you're allowed to do this when it comes to systems. We can literally add the columns of the system to create a new equation, which is uh, a part of the system. So in other words, I can add these together and come up with uh, 7x plus uh, 7y is equal to 14. All right, so 7x plus 7y is equal to 14. I could use this equation, just get rid of this equation or this equation, and substitute it in. So you learn this uh, when you study more advanced techniques in terms of solving equations. But just so you know, linear combination is totally fine when you're dealing with systems. But what if we can add these two equations together and in the process eliminate one of the variables? So in other words, if we add, let's uh, let's take this scenario. Let's kind of switch this to a negative 2y. If this was a negative 2y and we add it down, that would be totally awesome because what would, you know, what, what would happen? We would eliminate the y, right? So we would get 7x plus and then 2y uh, plus a negative 2y is 0 is equal to 14. And check this out. We have 7x plus 0 or 7x is equal to 14. We can easily solve this equation for x. And once we have that, we simply just plug in uh, that value into either one of these equations to get the y, right? But uh, obviously, we don't have a negative 2 right here. But we can fix this uh, system up such that we can create two opposite values, right? And we don't really care whether uh, the opposites are in the x column or the y column. It doesn't make a difference. So let's work on creating two opposites under the uh, uh, for the x variable, okay? So we have 5 here and 2 here. So kind of think about you know, the lowest common multiple, you know, kind of like if these were denominators. How can we create two opposites? Well, if I multiply this by a negative 2 and this by a positive 5, this 2x by a positive 5 and this 5x by a negative 2, I'm going to end up with a negative 10x and 10x. So that's what I want to do. But if I'm going to multiply this uh, 5x by negative 2, I've got to multiply the entire equation by negative 2. And I've got to multiply this 2x by a 5. Well, we have to multiply everything by a 5. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And this is what we end up with. We have negative 10x plus negative 4y is equal to negative 8. And then 10x plus 25y is equal to 50. But look right here. We have these opposites. So now we can use this linear combination to get rid of the x variable. So let's go ahead and add down and combine. So when we do that, what do we have? All right, so again, we're going to add down a linear combination. So negative, te uh, negative 10x plus positive 10x, 0, negative 4y, 4y, excuse me, plus 25y, 21y, right? So again, negative 4y plus 25y, 21y, negative 8 plus 50, 42. Okay, so at this point, we have a lovely one-step 
the equation 21y is equal to 42. So all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 21. 42 divided by 21 is 2, so y is equal to 2. All right, so now that we have what uh, y is equal to, we can easily solve for x. All right, so let's go ahead and take that next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, for those of you that are subscribers, thank you so much. And uh, for those of you that watch uh, you know, other uh, videos that I post, you know that I always stop the video and I stop and I say, hey, listen, can you subscribe? Because I'm not shy to ask for help. And, uh, you know, you shouldn't be either, especially if you have a goal, okay? And if your goal is to pass your class, your math class, or maybe to learn math, get help, okay? I mean, obviously, learn as much as you possibly can, but if you need help, get the, get the help that you need, right? And when it comes to math, find someone that, you know, uh, knows what they're talking about. So if you are a student, go to your math teacher. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I wouldn't be wasting my time watching you if my math teacher taught me in a way. Well, I get that. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, your teacher may not teach in a style that resonates with you, but still talk to your teacher, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, but you got to get help right now. For me, I cannot grow my YouTube channel and reach more students more. And that's how I look at people who watch my videos as students without your help. So I'm asking for your help. And really what I'm asking for is for you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. By the way, I did mention if you are struggling in basic algebra, not struggling, but if you don't understand, if you need to learn this stuff, check out my pre-algebra and or algebra one course. Uh, you'll find links to those in the description of this video. If you're someone that's not in school anymore, but you just kind of want to brush up on your math skills, then check out my math skills where you build a course. I get into basic math, algebra, geometry, and a lot of other stuff in that course as well to include systems. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up. So we figured out what y is equal to. Remember, we uh, just solved for y. y is equal to 2. So... Now that we know that y is equal to 2, how can we solve for x? Well, we can do this in a number of different ways. We have two equations here to, uh, to basically pick from, okay? We can plug in this uh, uh, 2 for this y right here or this y. It doesn't make a difference. So just make a, you know, look at the equation. Always try to pick the simpler equation. But if you, you know, if one doesn't look, you know, simpler than the other, just pick an equation and move on. So I will... Uh, I'll choose the first equation because I see a 4. So we have uh, 5x plus 2y is equal to 4. So I'm going to replace this y with a 2. Okay. So y is equal to 2. So we're going to replace this y with 2. So now this equation is 5x plus 2 times 2. And that's going to be equal to 4. And now uh, when we multiply here, 2 times 2 is 4. So 5x plus 4 is equal to 4. So now we're going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. And we're going to end up with 5x is equal to 0. And when we divide both sides of the equation by 5, we get x is equal to 0. All right, so x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. But what does that mean? Well, remember, uh, conceptually, uh, x is equal to 0 and y equals to 2. Rep y is equal to 2 represents the ordered pair. Okay, and this is an important part of solving systems is that you understand what the solution to these systems mean. This is the order pair where these two uh, linear equations right here intersect. So if you were to graph these lines individually, and that's a whole other skill that you need to have, you're going to see that they're going to cross at this point right there. All right, so hopefully this was an interesting and better yet a uh, informative little video. Now here's the thing. Even if you understood this, you're like, yeah, yeah, I kind of remember how to do this. If you truly want to master mathematics, there's no substitute for practice, okay? It's not enough to just watch someone do math and be like, oh, I get that. I kind of like to use the example, if you want to improve in basketball, uh, do you want to watch the NBA all day? Like, yes, I'm going to watch a lot of basketball on TV and uh, I'll get better. Well, no, it's the same thing as like watching these videos. You have to do the practice. Now, uh, you know, using that same metaphor, if you go out and practice basketball and you just like, you know, shoot the basketball one time and it goes in, uh, does that mean you're a total expert? Well, no, you might, you know, gotten lucky. Maybe you need to kind of take some shots over here, do some things over here. The same thing in math, right? These are different type of problems, word problems, problems involve fractions, decimals, you know, no different. All right. So math is a skill. 
And if you truly want to learn math, you have to practice, right? So hopefully you'll follow through beyond this video. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math and adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.